Hello, my name is Scamander and today I'm going to take you through my favourite tools and resources that can help you in creating Minecraft maps, data packs and add-ons, all of which are free! I'm going to go through quite a lot in this video, so in the description there are timestamps to each section of the video as well as downloads and links to everything I mention here. If you find this video useful, be sure to leave a like on the video and also do feel free to subscribe down below, it would really help out a ton. Otherwise, let's get right into looking at some useful applications. So let's begin with number one, Blockbench. Honestly, if you're using any other program to do 3D modelling for Minecraft, stop. Use Blockbench. No other Minecraft modelling program is as feature packed as Blockbench. It's got a really slick interface and it's just overall really easy to use. Just have a look at some of the things people have created, there's so much potential. So if you're wanting to create some 3D models, it's an absolute must have. Number 2, Amulet. Chances are you've heard of MC Edit, but unfortunately it hasn't been updated for 3 years and doesn't work very well with modern versions of Minecraft. Well, Amulet is pretty much just a modern MC Edit. You can still transfer areas between worlds, clone selections, and make other big edits to your world to help you with your map making. Number 3, Noteblock Studio. Basically, it's just a program that allows you to create Noteblock songs inside of the application. You can actually import MIDI files, which is a type of music file, and you can get some really great results without having to know anything about music. Number 4, World Painter. World Painter allows you to generate amazing looking worlds for you to start building on. I'll link to someone else's tutorial in the description so you can learn how to use it, but as you can see from some other people's work, some amazing terrain can be generated with this program. Number 5, GIMP. GIMP is basically just a free alternative to Photoshop. I use it all the time to edit textures, crop images and do all sorts of image manipulation. It does have quite a steep learning curve, but once you've gotten your hands around the program, it can do pretty much anything you could ever want. Number 6, Pixlr. Very similar to GIMP, Pixlr is an online program that arguably has a more intuitive interface and is totally online. Either of them work very well for texturing, so I'd say give both a go and pick your favourite. Number 7, Chunky. <laughs> Chunky is a program that lets you create high quality renders of your Minecraft world. It's especially useful for rendering very large areas, something which wouldn't usually be possible inside of Minecraft. Number 8, Figma. This is a bit of a bonus one, but I thought I'd mention it anyway. I found Figma to be really useful for putting together thumbnails and icons, I use it to import images and graphics and position them using the alignment tools inside of Figma. It's basically like a huge drawing board, you can try different things, see them all together on the screen and pick what you think looks best. There we go, that's all the applications, so now let's take a look at some online generators you can use to help you with your projects. Starting off with number 1, MC Stacker. This is a website that allows you to generate all different sorts of commands. I mainly use it for creating complex items and entities, but as you can see at the top, there is so much potential in what you can do with this generator. Pretty much every useful command can be generated, it's, it's just a really great tool, especially for getting started with Minecraft commands. Number 2 is technically the same website, but here we have MC Stacker's Mural Generator. This website lets you import any image and it will convert it to a Minecraft pixel art. You can then copy it block by block into your game if you have outstanding patience, or you have the better option of importing it via a data pack or as a one command creation. Number 3, Misode's data pack generators. Misode's GitHub page is extremely useful for generating code for parts in a data pack outside of just function files. I'll be honest, I've not messed with a lot of these things apart from advancements in loot tables, but there is a variety of really cool tools here especially for changing world generation and adding new dimensions. Very cool stuff. Number 4, Minecraft JSON. This has always been my go-to site for generating any text-based commands. It supports Telrel commands, title commands, as well as custom text in books and on signs. I found it most useful to add hover text and click events to text, but it's really useful if you don't want to manually type out all those pieces of code every single time. Number 5, Dig Minecraft. While I'd still recommend MC Stacker for Minecraft Java Edition, the reason I've put this in the list is due to the fact that it has a full bedrock section, so for all you bedrock players you may find this quite useful for generating some different types of in-game commands. 
Moving away from the online generators, here are my favourite code editors for making data packs and add-ons. So let's start with my personal favourite, VS Code. This is the code editor which I use to create data packs, just as I really like the look of it. You can see all the files in the hierarchy at the side, so you can easily switch between files rather than always opening them up in the file explorer. I'd also recommend the extensions Datapack Helper Plus and Arkansoft's Language-MC Function extension for the best syntax highlighting and auto-completion when you're working on projects. Number 2. Atom This is an alternative to VS Code, but really, as a whole, they both do the same thing. It's mainly up to your preference. If using Atom though, I'd recommend installing this MC function extension for syntax highlighting. Totally up to you though. Number 3. Sublime Text I've never found myself using Sublime Text, but I do know a lot of people like it, so it's definitely worth a mention. If using Sublime Text, I'd once again recommend Arkansas's language-mc function extension for the best syntax highlighting. Wow! All in all, what text editor you use is really mostly up to your preference. I just personally prefer VS Code, but I'd recommend you give them all a go and pick whatever you like the best. Up next are my recommended sites for guides and documentation for Minecraft commands. First up is the Minecraft Commands Wikipedia page. It is a very big wall of text, but I've still found it useful even if it's just to double check command syntax and to remind myself of the differences between Bedrock and Java Edition commands. There are so many! Number 2. Bedrock.dev This website has a very comprehensive documentation on all sorts of things, specifically for Bedrock Edition. It's just overall a really great resource for learning about creating add-ons with tons of different sections detailing all sorts of topics. Number 3. Skyliners Guides this GitHub page has detailed documentation for advancements, look tables, and recipes for Minecraft Java Edition, along with a really nice guide to look tables for Bedrock Edition. Definitely worth taking a look at if you're interested in those things. And finally, number 4, the Minecraft Commands Reddit and Discord server. Specifically, the resources page and the frequently asked question page on Reddit are extremely thorough and also link to further guides and utilities you can use when creating data packs. I also really urge you to join their Discord, without question. It is the very best place for you to ask questions and get help with commands. Would highly recommend you join it if you haven't already. And there we go! That's me covered everything I have on this list. I do hope you found this video useful. If you enjoyed, feel free to subscribe down below, it would really help out a ton. A reminder, all the links to all these tools are in the description of the video. I'm also looking to stream a public event with people on my Discord on Saturday the 6th of March. Mm. So be sure to join my Discord if that interests you. Otherwise, I hope you have a good day. I'll see you. Bye!